Okay guys, today I'm going to take you through my Let Go Find a remodel of a 1950 Craftsman benchtop drill press. Um, as you can see here, it's in pretty rough shape. Um, paid 30 bucks for it and it didn't work. Um, I plugged the motor in and it basically just popped. So um, you'll see I'll dig into that in the video, put a nice uh, coat of paint on it, go through it all, and hopefully make it look better than it looked new in 1950. Um, the actual motor is a 49, and it's a Dunlop, and as you can see here, it's cracked in uh, pretty bad shape. Um, inside, it's just all dirty and gunked up, and uh, the bearings here in the motor were just completely frozen, so had to bang those off. All right, guys, this is what it looks like. I got the motor all broken apart here, ripped down. I, you look at the design of the head of that drill press. Is that a, just a nice design or something? It looks like a, a kitchen aid to me, and I absolutely love it. Uh, dusted the motor out real quick. I'm going to eventually give it a real good going through and clean it up. Uh, but the first thing I had to do was get the bearings out of, off the motor and this is what the inside of the motor looks like, and it's got a spindle on each side and a shaft on each side, and I got one of the new bearings on there just to kind of um, see, make sure it fit and all of that. I'm ending up with an actual bearing factory because every time I do a project, I order the wrong bearing, and I rarely ever return them uh, and when that's the case here uh, it took me two or three tries to get the right one here i eventually found a place by my house though that has bearings and specializes in bearings and i will be going there in the future but and i won't have to order online and risk it uh, but this is what the original bearings look like and they're unsealed and they get a piece of felt that sits on top of there instead of these nice sealed bearings the way they work today and this is what was seized up and not only was it seized up it was rusted onto the spindle so to get the bearing off i had a really whale on it knowing what i know now and what a pain in the neck it was to get these bearings i probably would have soaked this in some evapora some oil and, and, and massaged it off because um, well, these are all the new ones. I believe that I could actually reuse these if I cleaned them up because I cleaned up one of them and it works pretty well. This is what it looked like in here. Um, if you take a look at this here, this is the felt that would sit on top of the bearing. Um, and these are all the other parts. Then it would use a spring on top of that. So I'm gonna get into that, clean it up. Uh, let me see what else I got here found this online which is really cool it's the manual for it i was able to print that up 1949 i'll go through all of that to make sure that it goes back together because when i took this apart it seemed like some things just didn't seem right there was an extra washer here missing a washer there and uh i'm gonna make sure it goes back correctly and the end cap here that I showed you that was cracked. I did throw a little JB weld on it. Where is that? Here it is. Uh, I'm gonna smooth that all prior to paint. I'm gonna go with a nice blue paint, I believe. We'll see. I got a couple of ideas on what I wanna do with that. Um, and the reason that's cracked is they would wail on this uh, to get the adjustment because this is what holds the tension on the pulley. And that's what cracked from you know years and years of hitting that to adjust the belt. And I'm going to get it, put, put a new cord or a new grommet, at least, on the power supply there. I really like the way that works with the switch from 1950. Um, a lot of the older drill presses didn't have such a, you know, they might have had a toggle switch put on at a later point, but not something as nice as that. So that's what the motor looks like. I do have the quill and the spindle broken apart, soaking in Evaporust. So let's take all a look right, at So that. this is all the parts soaking in the Evaporust. And if you remember from the pictures, they had heavy rust on them, so... Looking pretty good. Everything's freed up, opening up nicely. Uh, I'm going to get into them, clean them up. Uh, just take a look at the handle here. You can see where the evaporust missed. And um, so it makes it up, cleaning it up so much easier once you soak it in the evaporust. I will uh, get that into um, on my uh, fiber wheel. And so that's all the parts. I got all the little handles in there, everything that had all that rust on it. Doesn't look beautiful when it comes out of the Vaporus, but it makes it so much easier to clean up on the wire wheel as well as the fiber wheel to make a nice shine on them, wax them up, and get them back in place. So let's keep moving right, along. guys, I took a couple of stuff out of the Evaporust 
and I am going to clean these up on the fiber wheel like I mentioned. This has become to be known as the Joe's Shop Fiber Wheel straight from China, as you can see. Um, wear your gloves. You don't want to catch the coronavirus from this thing. Uh, that being said, they do make one that's a little bigger. I don't remember what I paid for these. They may have been about 8 bucks a pop, 10 bucks a pop. I don't exactly remember but you can get these on amazon they last a long time the one i got on the wheel right now is about down to here and it's getting pretty close to maneuver uh so i'll probably have to replace it um at some point as i finish this project but a couple of things i wanted to show you real quick is here is one i did on the fiber wheel took only a few minutes and here's the other handle that hasn't been done on the fiber wheel so this is done in probably less than five minutes and it's ready to go back onto the drill press at some point. And I'll just throw a wax coat on it so it won't rust up again. Um, the other thing I started to do was the chuck here. And if you take a look here, look at the difference, right? Look, I did this part. I did over here. I did here. I haven't done this part yet, but I started to do this side. And look at the difference. And that's all done on the fiber wheel in a matter of a few minutes. And it makes quick work of projects this is a great invention that all the people in the tool community are so grateful for joe's shop for sharing with us so uh, let's take a look what it looks like on the bench grinder and i'll take you uh through right. i just wanted to show you one more before i show you what it looks like on the bench grinder here a half and half as i like to call it this is the handle half of it soaked in evapor rust you actually got a little piece that wasn't in evapor rust it got a little bit of evapor rust on it so but not a lot and then this is something i just cleaned up in a matter of less than 60 seconds look at the difference huh look how nice it's gonna shine up so just kind of wanted to show you that i think that really stands out with the half and half now let's take a look at the bench grinder so here it is, the fiber wheel in action, and it is just a great happy medium between a wire brush and um, a buffing wheel. It, it just really gets a little bit of the material off, but leaves a nice sheen and can do the majority of the project uh, with this, unless you need to go a little bit higher with like a flap disc on an angle grinder or whatnot. But I love this thing and it makes quick work of everything. decided to use paint remover for this project because of the paint was so old I didn't know if it would have lead in it plus it had a lot of old paint that needed to come off and grinding it would have taken forever you spray this stuff on you let it sit the full 15 minutes you scrape it you use a paper towel you wipe it off look at the craftsman branding there right there it's gone oh that broke my heart uh, but I just let it sit on there too long. You live and learn. I should have popped it off. Uh, brought it outside at uh, one point and just hit it with some fiber wheel with the fiber wheel on an angle grinder to get the heavy stuff. Here's the upper deck. I just wanted to get it uh, the rust off, so I soaked it with a vapor rust on paper towel. Um, taped it off once it was nice and clean. Um, here's the lower deck. Um, shot that with primer and it was ready for paint. So I have everything primed and painted. I haven't put a clear coat on anything yet. But one of the things I'm really curious to see how it turns out is this red stripe that I put in here. So before me shooting everything, I didn't show this on video, I shot red along this inlay in here. And I let that dry for a couple days. And then I taped it off and I cut it with a razor blade. And then I painted over all of it. So my hope is, is when I pull this tape off, it gives a nice clean look and it looks real nice and then if that's the case i'll clear coat it all as one so let's see if it's gonna look nice or not if it really came out bad i'm thinking i'm just gonna uh probably paint the whole thing silver but so far it looks pretty good come on baby come on baby so far so good that looks pretty darn sharp Let's see. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. This is where it was a little tricky. All right. You know what? Ah, there's a little bit of something there. I'm going to have to touch it up. But I figured I might have to go back and touch a few little spots. But on out of everything one little spot i'm gonna have to get some tape uh, some paint on a little brush and hit it but that looks pretty 
darn good. And once I clear coat it all as one, I think it'll look just fantastic. All right, let's keep I'm moving I'm just going to share two items with you. If you want to see more about them, I did make previous videos. But the first one here is the Franklin Jaw Horse uh, from Harbor Freight. Got it for 99 bucks on sale. Look how it holds that pipe up. Allowed me to sand it. Um, just an invaluable tool while holding the whole press during the process with sanding and whatnot. So I'm going to show you another cool tool here. Um, and that's the Lang rethreader. Um, all the hardware that's holding the motor on. I just cleaned it all up. As you can see, it came out nice, but it is boogered up. I can't even screw this anymore by um, just with my fingers because you can see the threads are in pretty bad shape here. Um, and I could go out and get new hardware or I could use this Lang rethreading kit. Let's take a look. So what you do here is you pick out the right size thread. In this case, it's a 5 16th course. You put on the nut um, that's going to re-thread it onto here. You can use a ratchet, you can use two wrenches, and you just kind of screw it on, and it will recut those threads for you. Um, once it gets past the boogered up part, you can do it by hand until it hits another part that needs a little bit more coercing, and rinse and repeat to four others of four others of these and uh hopefully it'll uh come out nice and then let's do the nut okay so here's the nut and you pull the right adapter here and just kind of run it through so the nut does not seem to be the problem i mean it's cleaning out the threads but for the most part it was uh nice and cut so here is the bolt and let's see how it works now Look at that, huh? Nice. All the way on by hand. You know, this Lang kit, it's made in the USA. I think it was about 50 bucks on sale, so it might cost a little bit more. And it might save me at least $10 in hardware for this project. And sometimes the hardware is stuff that's just hard to replace. You know, it's not as simple as just getting a common bolt. Um, it might be something that is old, and this will re-thread it for you. So definitely recommend bolt these items uh, if you like doing restorations. Let's keep moving so, along. So far, project's going pretty good. Not too many unexpected snags, but I do want to share what you hear, the bearing situation. Um, it really only has one bearing in this whole entire drill press, and it's not a traditional type bearing like I had in the motor. It's a thrust bearing, and this one here is the original thrust bearing. It's made in Philadelphia, PA, and when I pulled it out, I said before I broke it down, so let me see if I could find one of these and order it um, because I didn't, wasn't sure. You can see how it sounds there. Wasn't sure if that was the way it should be. If I, I figured the thing's from 1950, it's the original bearing. Should I order a new one? And I was able to find a new one online, made in the USA as well. The same company, nice, and it's, uh, I believe it's 605 is the model number on it. Um, and when it came in, I noticed it basically worked the same exact way. Um, that this bearing that was so old just really probably needs to be repacked in there with some grease. So I'm just going to repack it with a little bit of this red grease and uh, it should be good to go. And I think I'm going to use the original. Why not? Um, and then, hey, the bearing factory continues to grow. Uh, but this is basically the way a thrust bearing works is um, it sits on, it kind of holds the load um versus going in here where normally this is where a bearing uh, would go is in here um, this works like this where it kind of sits on here and once the loads on there smooth as butter it kind of is meant to hold the load and that's the thrust bearing so once i grease that up should be like new let's keep moving all along. right guys another couple things that could save you a lot of time and money is this heat shrinking tubing um you can get it at harbor freight i believe this one I got from, uh, I believe, Home Depot. It comes in different grades, different lengths. You could get it thicker, thinner for different applications and whatnot. And uh, the reason it saved me some money here is all the wires that ran all the way through the motor when I went through it, um, wherever it was frayed, I put long sections of it on. And it saved me just a lot of time and energy. And it basically made these wires like new. Um, I'm about to put a connection here to the switch 
and I'll use a piece of heat shrink on that. So maybe I'll shoot a quick video of that as they go through. Uh, but it really is a, um, saves a lot of time, energy, and money. And then the last thing I'm just um, going to use for this project is this grommet assortment I picked up at Harbor Freight. And what that's going to do is go on the cord and where it goes into uh, the actual mount. That'll make it look professional and really clean and neat. There's the old grommet. It basically just fell apart when I took it. So for four bucks, I think I got enough to last me a lifetime. So let's get So this. I got a grommet in there, but it did not fit um, as well as the other one. So I did drop a little bit of epoxy around it, and then the wire I ran through it was a little bit loose, so I just put a piece of shrink wrap on there, heat shrink, and uh, it seems to be nice and firm. And then what I did on the other side here is I put a bunch of heat shrink a couple of different ones and i built it up a little bit so when you pull on this it will not come out and it'll keep the tension off the wires i just need to heat shrink this last one here which i'll show you and finish wiring it up so until i discovered this heat shrinking years ago i would have just put in some electrical tape on this and called it a day but this heat shrink really makes all the difference look how quick this is Not nice or what? Better than electrical tape. Let me finish wiring this up and get the motor mounted on the drill. All right, before mount, we got to do a bench test. Don't want to mount it and uh, find out then that it doesn't work. Let's see how she does. Sounds pretty good to me. Now let's mount it. And there it is, finally complete. And that is a hammered gray or silver. I'll show you that here in a minute. Really happy with the way everything came out. If you remember, there was wood on top of this deck and then I it was very rusted and I soaked it in evapor rust and I basically that's the way it came out with just a little compound and I really like that because that's originally the way it looked coming out of the factory those are the original machine marks and I get restored it just back to that so the fact that they had that wood on there made it just amazing um, all the silver pieces polished out really nice with the fiber wheel as you can see you know with the silver it blends a little bit but it is like a silver bullet this thing the motor just came out fantastic. What I did on this project that I haven't done as much on others is I really put a lot of clear coat, if you see that. I wanted it to have that automobile finish. Look how nice that motor is, huh? One third horsepower, she has a lot of power. Uh, that's a 1949 motor. And look how that restored. I found a little rubber cap that I had for um, in a previous drill press that I done and uh, look at that is that nice or what we'll take a look at the chuck and then the base underneath i just painted which i'll show you here and i got this stand that let on let go for 10 bucks because i had it on a folding table and it was about to collapse it so <laughs> how to get it off because it weighs a ton the motor alone weighs over 30 pounds this thing's probably at least 100 and something pounds it's over 100 pounds i don't know maybe i'm exaggerating but it is heavy um, we'll run it for you here in a minute. So let's take a closer cool. about this as you could swing that out of the way. And if you wanted to get more, you know, a little closer, you can, as you can see, I painted all that, actually painted that the hammered black, the same as the motor. Then I used the regal red. That's the red you're seeing there. And if I decide to use this stand, I think I would paint that stand red and it would just set this thing off. Look really sharp. So I'll probably put it on wheels and paint that stand red and that'll really make the silver pop on this well enough talking about how pretty she is let's see her work. i'll run it here for you in a second but just wanted to show you the nice switch that this motor has on it which makes it real nice and this is the piece that um goes out when you want to put tension on the motor so as you move the belts and that was the problem i think they had a belt that was one inch too short so the new belt I got was an inch longer yeah you got a little bit of space here but imagine that being an inch shorter 
they were always banging on the motor or prying on the pulley to get the belt off and that's what caused a lot of damage to this motor and damage to the pulley and i had to sand all that stuff out of the pulleys from where they were prying to get this on um i had to fix all you don't really see it it blends in pretty well uh but you know i had to jb weld all of this it was cracked and several spots i jb welded inside outside um to fix that there's a nice little touch on look you can see there's a dust cover inside the motor i actually painted that with the uh, regal red as well all right enough talking let's see so works. a key to a good drill press and the one thing i just truly didn't know if this thing was going to be able to do or not is run really true and not have a lot of run out considering i never seen it run and never heard the motor run um i was curious to see how it would uh drill so let's turn it on listen to the motor sounds pretty smooth right now i'm gonna try to i got it on the lowest setting i'm setting this here right on top of that black dot now i'm gonna do a pretty good plunge here i don't have this hot bolted down with a clamp or anything but let's see how smooth this is look at that I mean, this is a nice piece of pressure treated wood I just ran the whole blade down, uh, the whole bit, three inches like it was nothing. Hot knife through butter, and as you can see there, it hit that spot. So the run out seems really good. Yeah, I got the micrometer, and I could put that all on there, and I probably will at some point, but to the eye, it works fantastic. All right, let's look at a couple of other features. I just love hearing her run, smooth as can be. So another feature that this thing has that I had no idea that it even had is it has a depth guide um, normally in the newer drill pressers you'll see they run this way there's a rod that goes up and down this is actually adjustable from here and as you can see as I spin this if you adjust it it'll actually stop on this at the depth that you want so it actually has a depth guide which is pretty cool I don't know if you could see on here there's markings yeah you can I'll see those markings you could see how far you want to plunge right so right there is one inch two inch three inch so you can measure your plunges on there and i didn't even know that was under there until i got through all that patina and rust all right let's wrap her up all right i don't know if you can see that number 33 it says on there and that's hartford connecticut and that is a jacobs chuck and that cleaned up just beautifully all right the other thing i didn't show you here is that actually this handle is spring loaded so if you wanted to pull it up and you pull from up top you could do that if you like it lower you could do that another really neat innovative thing for 1950. all right so let's hear it run one more time oh just love the sound you see there the belt's got a little bit of a wobble just because uh she's got to break in a little bit just came out of the package probably have to retension it and tighten it up after she runs for a bit I'm just really happy with it really running nice and true and smooth clear coated the snot out of this thing a lot of wax on all the chrome everything's been waxed Inside and outside has been clear coated. Well, guys, until I do another drill press restoration, this should be it for a little while. But I will definitely be doing more tool restorations, tool hauls. Um, so like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I did creating it. Have a great day.